Hello everyone, uh, we are going to take some time today and we are going to go over how we can use our commander to help us out with our central limit theorem problems. Okay, so to get started, let's read this problem. So it says, hey, remember Harry from last time? Well, as he was working with Jack, another trainer came up to him and revealed the secrets of the central limit theorem. Harry was so impressed he decided he wanted to crunch some numbers. During these games, they have a row off to see how far athletes can row in four minutes. As this comp at this competition, they have an event called Battle of the North Sea where athletes are randomly assigned to teams and can beat in Viking-inspired rowing events. Overall, we know that the average four-minute rowing distance is about 800 meters with a variance of 250 thousand meters squared and they know that the distances are not normally distributed and then it says for the first event in the groups of 85 teams called ramming speed what percent of teams can average above 801 meters all right so the first thing that we need to do is we need to extract the pieces of information that are pertinent to us so overall right now we know that mu is going to be equal to or the overall mean that was given to us was 800 meters and I'm going to do this in this variable notation because if you type in the variables, it saves it over here. Now, I have a handy uh, kind of like Greek keyboard that I can use to put in the Greek values. You could literally type out mu for the mu character, but anyhow, so this is how it's going. All right, so the next one that the piece of information that we're given was the original variance, uh, which is sigma and I'm just going to do sigma squared, oops, sigma squared, and that's equal to our variance, and that's just going to be that 250,000. Okay, so if I want that sigma, so once again, if I just do sigma, oh, oh looks like it didn't store that Greek character. Okay, I'm going to go back to just regular characters. We'll do sigma squared equals 25,000. There we go. Now what I can do is I can type in the S being equal to the square root of, or not, we'll do sigma, is equal to the square root of sigma squared. And when I hit enter, I now have that my sigma is equal to two, is equal to 500. Okay. The next part we're going to need to get from our the next part of the problem. So it says for the first event, um, they group into teams of 85 and called ramming speed. So that is going to be that our n is equal to 85, or the sample that we're going to take. We're going to randomly select teams of 80 uh, with people that give us a sample size of 85, and that's our sample size. Okay, and then it says what percent of teams can average above. 841. So this is what's the probability that a random event or that a random team of these 85 is going to be greater than 841 meters. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to uh, we need to basically plug these numbers into our our commander. So our critical value. So we can just do like x crit. And that's going to be equal to 841. Right, so at this point, we have all the pieces of information that we need in order to plug them into our R commander. So we can go to our basic statistics, random variables, continuous, normal, and normal probabilities. Okay, so in order for us to be able to use the, the central limit theorem here, we either have to have that the original distribution is normal or our sample size is large enough. And as we notice, uh, it says at the very last line here that they know that the distances are not normally distributed. So that means we have to have a bare minimum sample size of 30. And our sample size is 85, so we are good to go. So the mean that we put up here is going to be our mu value, or we can put in that 800. Now the standard deviation here, you might be tempted to put in this 500. Now that would be correct if we were looking at what's the probability that a single person can can row over 841. But that's not the question here. The question was, what is the average of a team getting over this 841? So what we need is we actually need what's called our standard error. And our standard error is just equal to the original sigma divided by the square root 
of our sample size. And so now we have our standard error of this 54. And if you wanna, if you wanna just copy this number, you can come down into your window over here, type in standard error, hit enter, and it will pop it out for you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this value and paste it into my standard deviation. And then it wants to know our probabilities of like, where's our critical value? Where are we going from and to? And so since we want to go above 841, we're going to go 841 and to infinity. And if we're going to go to infinity, you can either type in I and F like this with a capital I, or you can just leave it blank. If you leave it blank, it assumes that we're going to go to infinity. And I actually want to plot this thing so I can make sure that the answer that we get is actually going to make sense. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And here we go. So we've got the mean of 800. We've got a standard deviation of this 54. And now we're plotting it. And the area under the curve looks like about 22%. It's there's what percent teams could average above this if they're all normally distributed like this. And we're saying it's about 22. And we click on our answer and there we go. All right, so we've got that first one done. Next part that we've got is how many standard deviations away from the mean is a target distance for ramming speed. So if we go and we look at this, at this 841, we want to see what's the z-score. So remember, the z-score is just going to be equal to um, the x-bar that I'm interested in. So where we have x-crit there, X bar that we're actually interested in is also 841. All right, so we've got our X bar now. And it was just like this critical distance of 841, but since we're interested in it with being respect to this teams of like 85, we that's really our X bar or our sample mean. So in order to calculate out our Z score, it's going to be X bar minus our mu value, sorry, mu, and we're going to divide by our standard error. Now we use this when we are talking about uh, about this in terms of our sampling distribution about the 85 teams. Uh, if we were talking about a single person, we would just type in for our X bar, it's still this critical point of 841, same mean, but our standard errors would be just the original standard deviation. But since we're talking about this in terms of our 85, then we can just go ahead and hit enter, and we have our z-score of 0.756, and when we check the answer, there we go. That's how many standard deviations away from the mean we are. Okay, for the second event, they group into teams of 34 called rating party. All right, so for this one, I'm just going to call this N2 is equal to 34. And now it says what percent of teams can average above 841. So we have the same critical, we've got the same X bar, but we actually are going to have a new standard error because remember, the standard error, we'll put in two since this is our second one, is going to equal sigma divided by the square root of n, but it's going to be n2 because instead of having 85 in our team, there's only going to be 34. So I can go ahead and hit enter and I've got a new standard error. So if I do standard error 2, that is my new standard error. So all I need to do is just copy this value and paste it in where we put in our old standard deviation. So now we've got our new standard error. It's the same critical point. Let's plot it again. And I'm going to go ahead and click apply. All right, so now we have this of 885 uh, for our standard error. 800 still is our mean. And our critical point is still this 841. And we now have like a 31% probability that these teams of 34. Now the difference of what happened is like why these these numbers are different even though we've got the same mean and we've got the same critical point is because of the the sample size differences because there are there's a bigger sample size in the first event of ramming speed that actually makes the standard error smaller and because the standard error is smaller it narrows down our normal distribution okay so what we can do now is we can answer how many standard deviations away from the mean is the target distance for rating party. 
And what we can do is we can go back to that z-score equation, and the only thing that's different here is we're dividing by standard error two instead of our original standard error. So I'm now, instead of using dividing by 54, I'm dividing by this 85. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter, and now my new z-score is going to be this 40, or this 0.47 instead of what we had up here is this 0.75. And there we go. There's our answer. Nice job. Okay, so it says Jack, remembering that he was the promising athlete from last time, wants to know what his team average should be if they want to get into the top 5% of both ramming speed and rating party events. So we've got if we want to be in this top 5% or kind of this area down here, for each of the teams, how far on average do they need to row? So in order to do this, what we're going to do is we go to our basic statistics, random variables, continuous, normal, and quantiles. Okay, so with the mean, we're still using 800. And the standard deviation, we're going to switch from our original standard error for the first one for ramming speed, and then our standard error two for our rating party. So let's go ahead and copy that guy in, and we're going to paste it here. And the probability that we want is this 5%. But do we want it from the lower end or do we want it from the upper end? And since we want to be in the top, like the best 5%, that's going to be rowing the furthest. So let's go ahead and click on upper tail. And I'm going to go ahead and click apply for this one. And then I'm going to copy this, control C, and paste it in for our standard deviation. So now we're de dealing with rating party, or this one with the bigger standard error and click apply there. And we see that we got like 889 for ramming speed and we got 941 for our rating party. All right, so down here it says, why is the distance uh, from the mean to the top 5% less for ramming speed than it was than rating party? So consider the following graphics. Okay, so here we've got the top 5% for ramming speed, and now we have the top 5% for rating party. And if you notice, these distributions, one is kind of spread out further than the other one. And that's because this top one, it's narrower because our sample size is larger. So to get to the top 5%, it actually is smaller um, than the other one. So if we look at our answer here, it says more rowers in ramming speed means that the standard error is smaller, which makes the distance to the top 5% from the mean closer than that of rating party. So anyhow, I hope that that helps you out on how to use our tools to help us answer questions about our normal, uh, about how to apply the central limit theorem and how the normal distribution, how all sampling distributions become normal if our sample size is large enough. Anyways, I hope that that helps you guys out.